Okay, Gordon Head. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Earlier this year, Honourable Speaker, we learned that the U.S. short sellers are betting on a Canadian housing crash, calling it an accident waiting to happen. One article quoted a high-profile U.S. short seller who described the Vancouver housing market as a, quote, a mix of money laundering, low interest rates, and he went on, a house is something you live in, but in Vancouver, you guys are trading them like penny stocks on Howe Street. Honourable Speaker, government often points to global forces as the main reason we need to be so careful and deliberate with our economic management. And I'm left wondering, Honourable Speaker, whether is, where is the careful and deliberate action to ensure that Metro Vancouver's housing market doesn't become the next housing bubble? More and more British Columbians are taking on bigger and bigger mortgages as housing becomes less affordable. The economic consequences of a burst housing bubble would be profound. My question, Honourable Speaker, my question to the Minister of Finance is this. Can he provide this House with an update as to what actions, if any, his government are taking to ensure that Vancouver's housing bubble doesn't burst? Minister of Finance. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and to the... Uh, and to the member. The first thing I, I can do, perhaps surprisingly, is uh, validate uh, for him the, uh, the interest, the curiosity, uh, at times the fascination that uh, Americans have for the Canadian real estate market, Canadian housing market, and that includes certainly uh, the Vancouver market, and that comes up frequently in the discussions we have from them. I, I think it derives in large measure from their own experience and the trauma that they suffered uh, after 2008, and I, I think further to that, it derives from the belief that if it happened there, it is destined and therefore must happen uh, elsewhere. And what I tell them is this, and I'll, I'll respond and I'll, I'll tell the member in the House what I say to them. They do have to understand that there are some fundamental differences. Uh, the levels of equity uh, that are involved in home ownership in uh, British Columbia are on average very, very different than uh, American markets. Uh, the rate of uh, default and arrears uh, thus far uh, is very small, and the, the general stability of our banking system uh, is different. Now, I don't say that at all to diminish or dismiss uh, the concern, uh, but this has been a high-value real estate market for a long, long time. What the government is doing is uh, examining measures that uh, may encourage uh, first-time home buyers to enter the market. We are, uh, as well, through BC Housing, uh, working to gather more information and more data, and I'm live to the members, uh, private members bill that was uh, tabled today. And we are also seeking to work with local governments to address issues around density uh, that are a key part of the puzzle of addressing housing affordability. Thank you, Thank Minister. You. Okay, Gordon Head on a supplemental. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thanks to the Minister for his response there. We've also recently heard, Honourable Speaker, from the Chinese Consul General in Vancouver, Ms. Liu Fei, who suggested that the blame for the situation lies with, and I quote, officials who monitor buyers, sellers, and real estate developers. And she goes on to say, people are blaming the buyer. It's wrong. It's the wrong direction. I mean, the regulation here, nobody is playing the role. Honourable Speaker, her point is that government must ensure that housing remains affordable and the bubble does not burst. And now the first step towards formulating good housing policy is to ensure that the necessary information is available for analysis. And for example, Honourable Speaker, a question? A, a, a question I have, it's a key question, is the Bear Trust property transfer tax loophole that I've brought up several times here, it actually incentivizing the speculative uh, uh, market? So my question then to the Minister is, instead of rhetorical speculation, contained in the reports that government released earlier this year when the fi finance minister provided British Columbians with an outline of what data it plans to collect and analyze to determine what action is necessary to ensure people uh, retain access to a, a, a affordable housing in Van Met Van Metro Vancouver. What plans, does the minister have, what plans does the minister have to gain and gather data to ensure that decision and policy is informed? Minister of Finance. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and to the member, I, I must first of all confess that uh, officials representing the uh, government of the People's Republic of China may have a, an affinity for centralized control and management that I do not share. <laughs> but, uh, 
but uh, be that as it may, um, I think there is value in, uh, in gathering additional data, which is why I'm pleased uh, the minister responsible for housing through BC Housing is working with uh, agencies to, uh, to gather additional data. I've mentioned earlier some of the uh, uh, other steps that the government has taken. I, I do believe uh, matters relating to density. I can provide the member with uh, data and statistics about uh, the average price of housing in Vancouver, which is actually lower than many people think. Uh, you can still purchase uh, a home in Vancouver for under uh, $400,000, about 30% of the homes uh, that are uh, exchanged or sold uh, are, are sold for uh, less than that. I think a big part of this is driven by the general economic uh, circumstances. Thank and you, if, Minister. Uh, uh, Madam uh, Speaker, since I don't expect I'm going to get a question from the official opposition about the state of the economy or the uh, public accounts that were tabled, I will take this opportunity you, to advise the House what people are saying. <laughs> What people are saying, the Minister. National Bank, the National Minister. Bank, Madam Speaker, says BC's economy is relatively buoyant, the budget is balanced, the debt burden is relatively low and falling. Yeah.